Hello, Stampers. I am one minute early, but it's close enough to 730. So I am just going to log into my Facebook page here while I wait for everybody to hop on so that I have everything ready and can see your comments as I'm stamping. That way, if you have questions, I can answer them for you. As you come online, make sure you say hello and tell me where you're from. I love to see where everybody is from. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Leslie. And I like to greet you if I can. <clears throat> it is really cold. So I hope all of you who are watching me in Wisconsin are staying warm. <clears throat> All right, just give me one second while I quick log in. Okay. I'm super bundled up. Hi, Julie. Uh, in my hoodie sweater here because it's really cold in my stamp room. Uh, my husband and I live in this older farmhouse. Uh, fun fact, it used to be owned by the Amish, so Amish people used to live in our house before we bought it, and the farmhouse is really old. It doesn't have the best, um, what do you call that, insulation, and it's super drafty by my windows, and normally I don't mind it. I actually run a little warm, and um, I kind of like that it the cool air flows in here while I'm stamping, especially if I'm organizing and kind of running around doing my thing. But when it's this cold, it's really cold in here. And I have one of those infrared heaters, uh, but I don't know if I'll blow a fuse <laughs> if I plug it in. And I think that would be really bad if I did something with our electrical and it ended up that our furnace couldn't work or something along those lines when it's so cold outside. Uh, so I thought I better not uh, worry about it and just put on an extra sweatshirt and brave the drafty air coming into my craft room. <clears throat> For those of you who are not local, uh, our wind chills got to negative 50 degrees today and that's really flipping cold. So, um, I like to tell a joke every live to kind of lighten the mood and get things started. And um, so before I tell my joke, I'm going to have an extra prize drawing for whoever posts a joke about cold weather in the comments because I think that would be super fun for us to hear everybody's cold weather jokes. <clears throat> so if you have one, post it in the comments. Um, I see Robin and Lisa popped on. Hello, ladies. Thanks for joining. <clears throat> uh, to tell you a little bit about my week. Last week, since my last live, I had a crazy busy week. I am in a leadership program at my company that I work for, so I spent some time out of the office there, and I have so much fun when I go. Hi, Sherry. <clears throat> I always learn so much about myself and my leadership style that I really think helps my team. It gets me super energized, and that was on Thursday and Friday, and so naturally I came home like super motivated and pumped. And I spent the weekend in my craft room. On Saturday, I purged like a maniac. I went through all my outdated Stampin' Up! stuff, all my partially opened, um, like, pads of paper that are had, don't have pieces that are big enough for me to use anymore or maybe have retired colors that I'm not using anymore. I packed a bunch of stuff away for my adorable little two-year-old niece and some of my, uh, my mother-in-law and my nieces and nephews for them to use in their craft kits because they all love to stamp too. And so my room, I swear, feels like it got twice as big just because I purged my junk and I reorganized 
So I think I told you about my adventures to Ikea. I bought, I, the thing is called like Scatis or I don't know. They have crazy names there. Basically, it's a pegboard that goes on the side. Um, I'm going to see if I can turn this. Can you? Oh, no, it's not going to go far enough. Darn it. I'll have to take um, a picture. <laughs> don't brag about purging. Well, my husband wanted to know if I wanted to go ice fishing on Saturday. And I'm like, nope, I'm cleaning my stamp room. And I actually stayed focused and did it. But anyway, um, I got this pegboard here next to my uh, stamping desk. I put so much stuff on it that I actually have room now for all my stamping. I can't believe it. Um, I see that Julie has a joke. What do you call a go cold ghost? Casper. That's really cute, Julie. I love that. Uh, my nephew Trenton likes dad jokes, so I think he would really like that. <clears throat> Thank you, Julie, for playing along. That's super funny. Um, so I did so much cleaning, and then, of course, all of us crafters know that once we clean and purge, my chair is like, keeps sliding down. Once we clean and purge our craft rooms, then we want to stamp. And so that's what I did. I did a ton of stamping this weekend. I even found time to get an extra blog post with a video on my YouTube channel um, and my blog, countrycardsbyrose.com. So make sure you check that out. I'm going to show you here what I made. So can you see this? I made this super pretty card with this butterfly. Um, this uses the, you know what, we're using it. I have it packed away. It uses that bundle, the, this one, Abstract Impressions Bundle. That's where that butterfly die is from. And the sentiment. So I made this one with some brusho and watercolor paper. I'm trying to get close so you can see all the detail here. Um, and I made this one. This was actually the first one I made. I loved it and I thought, well, I'll try another color. I still like this one the best, I think. Charlene's got a joke. If the sun shines while snowing, what should you look for? Oh, I'm excited for the punchline. Snowballs. Oh, snowballs. That's cute. Like rainbows, but snow. Oh, I love it. Okay. <clears throat> I have another card I want to show you. I'm just going to show you the outside. It's really big. I made this for um, a coworker of mine who is retiring. When I flip the camera around, I'm going to open this up and let you see what it looks like. This is probably the most intricate card I have ever made, and I love it. I'm so happy with how it turned out. So, um, my joke. Before we get started, I have to tell you my joke. Then I'll show off this card I made, and then we'll get to prizes, and then we'll get to stamping. So, why did the donut visit the dentist? To get a new filling. Exciting. That was a good joke, right? Okay, close your eyes if you get uh, motion sickness. I'm going to flip this around. Okay. I had to do a little moving of the stand. Okay, if the lighting, the lighting is always weird. I need to get another light that comes in from this side. My light only shines on this side. So if, uh, while I'm stamping, if you're having a hard time seeing um, what I'm doing, please speak up. Because I want to make sure you can see what's going on. Now for my card. This is a retirement card. 
and um, it's pretty intricate. You'll see as I open. Um, so to open it up, you have to untie. You've got to pull this um, string out, and now we open it like a trifold card. I've used a bunch of the copper embossing powder for some extra details. Um, the company uh, bought him a gift card to a wine tour, and so um, I made three pockets here in the card for all the gifts that everyone um, went in on to slide into. So these things that he gets to open up and see all slide in these pockets. So I made a travel voucher and there's some um, stuff that he needs to do to uh, get his flight booked. And so using our alphabet letter stamp, I stamped that on there and then there's a gift card. Of course, I stamped all this uh, because this will be a big adventure and um, just a few finishing touches. So this card took me on and off probably two weekends to finish and I'm super proud of it. Um, this is a man card so um, for those of you struggling with kind of color combinations for man cards I think this one worked pretty good. I'm just gonna tie this back up and set it aside what do you think of that? Do you think you'll like it? I hope so. You know, you put so much time and effort into a card and you really hope that the person really likes it. So. Okay. <clears throat> Just a reminder, when I'm done with the blog or with my Facebook Live, I always post everything I use to make the cards and the dimensions of all my cards in my blog. I give away prizes every week, so I'm here every week at 7.30 on Wednesdays, 7.30 p.m. You can be entered to win a prize by ordering from me, sharing the video, and commenting. We've got a bonus entry for um, jokes about snow and the cold. Now, last time we made some of these adorable mini Valentines, and I talked about how Stampin' Up! sells the note cards that go with them, and so I, I couldn't find them in the moment while I was making them, and so I wanted to kind of show you. Um, these are those little envelopes that these mini cards um, just slide right into. So this one was on the bottom of the stack, so I'd have to really take some time. I'm not going to go ahead and do that right now. But anyway, um, these just slide right into these little mini envelopes. And so with this, you've got three cute cards. And so that's our first prize, this set of the three... What am I doing? <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's been a long, cold day. So we've got this really cute set from last time. The winner of that prize is Sherry Borden. Thank you, Sherry, for your shares, orders, and likes. Um, I really appreciate it. We have the simple stamping card, just stamps, ink, and paper, the birthday card. And the winner of that prize is Robin Raditz. So thank you so much, Robin. Congratulations. And then we've got the gorgeous Wishing You a Lovely Day uh, layered card. And the winner of that is Julie Birschbach. So congratulations, Julie. Um, I still have to mail the prizes from last week. I have been working from home with this crazy weather and did not get a chance to go to the post office. Um, so all of the prizes will uh, go out in the mail tomorrow. They should go out. All right. We are going to quote unquote warm up with some 
simple stamping tonight. Getting all my supplies out. <coughs> okay. Last time we made a card using, it's actually the one that Robin just won, the simple stamping card, using um, the same size card base as our note cards and envelopes. You can buy note cards and envelopes together right from Stampin' Up. You can get them in Very Vanilla or Whisper White. They're the thick card stock, so the card base is nice and sturdy and um, thick. It really holds up. Um, <clears throat> it comes right with the envelopes, too. This is a set. This is perfect for the beginner stamper who's a little bit overwhelmed by all of the project choices and all of the um, different stuff that you can order. Get yourself, ooh, my light moved, hang on. Get yourself a set of these note cards and envelopes. I'm gonna show you tonight how easy it is to craft with them. Okay, we're using the Abstract Impressions um, stamp set. This comes in a bundle right now. This is in the big catalog. This is the die that I used for that really pretty butterfly card that I showed you. And this is the stamp set we're going to use. Okay. So for our project, we just have um, our very vanilla note card, card base. And then we're going to be using a strip of very vanilla that's three inches by one inch. The stamps in this stamp set are our um, <clears throat> photopolymer. So as I always like to remind you, we want to use something soft and cushy when we stamp so that we get a nice, crisp, clean image. This stamp set is a two-step set. This works great with your Stamparatus for making multiples. I'm going to start, though, just with the blocks. You'll see why, because of how I'm doing some repeated stamping. Okay, we've got soft sea foam, and there are two stamps of flower stems here in the stamp set. I'm using the thicker flower stems with our lighter color soft sea foam. And just along the bottom of the card, I'm gonna stamp that all the way across. I'm gonna go right to the very edge. Okay, next I'm using Mint Macaron. These colors go really, really good together. I just kind of found this by accident as I was uh, preparing these projects this weekend. And now we're using the thinner, um, the thinner stems. And I'm gonna go in these open spaces left in between each of these stamps that I already stamped. Easy, pretty so far. Can you guys see how this is coming along yet? Okay, next I'm coming in with some Bermuda Bay. And we're using the flowers. These look like um, round flowers. Okay, my stamp pad is dry, so give me a second. I'm gonna quick ink it up. You're getting a little lesson in inking. 
re-inking our stamps, our stamp pads. Oh, she's really dry. Okay, to re-ink your stamp pads, it's really this simple. You just squeeze your re-inker on. This is really soaking a lot of it up. It was really dry. It was not even uh, collecting on the stamp at all. Now to prevent the bubbles that sometimes form when you first re-ink your pad, you can just take the back of a spoon and spread that ink in there. Then you can use it right away. And then all I do is wipe this off with a baby wipe. And then I keep my spoon in with my pens and pencils. Okay. So, ooh, now I pressed a little too hard. Let me just clean this off. I don't want a whole bunch of mess. And let's try this again. There we go. Okay, now all we're gonna do is stamp these flowers across our card base. And if you want to get that extra one in there. Now as I see this stamped, I'm worried that this might be a little too dark. We'll see. The next color I've got here is Blueberry Bushel. And, oh, Julie, that's a good point. She says her stamp pads have seemed really dry lately. She's wondering if it's because of the weather. I think you could be right because I've noticed the same thing. So now I'm coming in with these details that go on the flowers. And here's why I love photopolymer. All we have to do is line these up on top of where we already stamped. And it adds a little fun, whimsical detail to our stamped flowers. I'm just going to clean this off because that's a pretty dark color and I'm always afraid I'm going to drop it on my project. I'm going to bring this closer up so you can see it a little better. Do you see how you have that detail in there? Okay. Now we've got this little strip of very vanilla and I'm going to take my sentiment. This one says, if flowers were hugs, I'd send you a thousand. And I'm just going to stamp that in the center of my paper here. Sue is asking, what are you wiping on after stamping? That is a great question, Sue. I am using the new chamois from Stampin' Up. They just came out with this in the big catalog. Um, you only need water to use it. It is wet, not like soaking wet, but certainly damp. And um, every so often I just take it under my sink and rinse it and squeeze it out. It's kind of like a sponge. See, I've used the other side too. And once you rinse it out, a bunch of this ink comes out. You can throw it in your washing machine and clean it. It works amazing. It's much smaller than the Stampin' Scrub and it works awesome. So plus kind to our environment since we're not using all of those, um, all of those baby wipes, throwing them away. Okay, now let's construct our card here. These card bases are already scored, so you just have to 
fold over and burnish if you want a nice tight edge. And I'm gonna add just a little extra pop here. Leslie says, loves the clear stamps, makes everything so easy. I totally agree. I really love this set because I can build um, these really pretty scenes, all these flowers, so simple because of the two-step stamping. Okay, I've wrapped this around my card three times. And now I'm just going to tie this in a bow. When I'm working with Baker's Twine, I like to tie it in a knot first. And then I got a piece of cat hair here. And then I'll tie it in a bow so that it stays nice and secure. Then I just kind of tug on my ends until I get it the loops the size that I want them. Okay. Now we've got our super cute sentiment. And by the way, I love, love, love this font. And I'm just going to get some dimensionals on the back of this here. And put this right on my card front. Okay, now I can shift around my bow. I want that bow to stay put. So I'm going to use a glue dot and stick it right under the knot of this bow here. No one will ever see it, and it will keep that bow right where I want it. Then all I have to do is trim the edges, and we're done. That was a stinking easy card. It seriously does not get any easier than that. Stamps, ink, and paper. Simple stamping. I promised you that every week I came here I would do at least one simple stamping project. That this one is it. It is awesome. I did not fold this very good. <clears throat> okay, and it was so easy that this weekend I whipped up a whole bunch of these. Um, here's another color combination I've got. This one um, is, let me think. Petal Pink and Mary Merlot. Those two go together really well. This one is Mango Melody and Calypso Coral. Um, that coral is really hard to see. I don't know if you can see that a little better. It's very subtle. So if you're going for kind of a subtle look, there's that. This one I think is my favorite. This one is... Highland Heather and Blackberry Bliss. I love Blackberry Bliss. It's my favorite color. So this is a super easy project. And here's the thing. This can work for a birthday card. This sentiment could work for birthday. It could work for sympathy. Um, it could work for thinking of you. It could be just a generic card. These flowers could work for anything. This is a really great versatile stamp set. It is perfect for, um, I would say, either beginners or those who are looking to crank out some projects. Beautiful. It's probably my favorite stamp set right now. <clears throat> so our first project is done already. I can't believe it. Okay, let me move on to our next project. Doing a little cleanup here. Getting some stuff out of the way. I keep all my projects in these handy bins 
so that they're ready to go. Next, anyone guess what we're making when you see this uh, type of adhesive? Thank you so much, ladies. I appreciate all of your kind comments. And yes, Robin, the stamp set works perfect for the chamois and it seems to keep it uh, damp really well. Okay, our next project, we are making a shaker card. So let me get all my supplies out here. Okay, this project is definitely more involved than the first card we made. However, it is not too difficult for you to make at home, I promise, okay? All right, we are using, let me get my envelope out of the way here, a pool party card base, a pool party layer, our card base here is five and a half by eight and a half, and of course I always fold that at four and a quarter. I've got a pool party layer that's five and three eighths by four and one eighth. So it's just an eighth of an inch smaller than your folded card base front. Now I've got some designer series paper here. Uh, this one comes from, hang on, I'm gonna find it for you. I keep all my uh, DSP in these new sheets that I found. Here it is. This is from the Twinkle Twinkle Designer Series paper. It coordinates with gray granite, night of navy, petal pink, soft sea foam, and whisper white. These beautiful, I love this. They are so pretty. And of course, these stripes are very in right now, so I had to use the stripes. Um, and then, I forget why I have a piece of Whisper White. Oh, for the inside of the card. And then I've got a window sheet here. There's really no dimension on this. You just need to make sure that it's bigger than your um, cut out whatever shape you're cutting out. In this case, we're using a circle. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is glue our um, we're gonna glue our DSP to our pool party layer. I'm actually grabbing my snail adhesive because I'm gonna do some die cutting on this right away and I don't want the glue to ooze out while I do it, so. Since it dries a little bit faster. Okay. Okay, now I have got a circle from the Layering Circles dies. And I'm gonna die cut this out of my two layers of cardstock that I glued together. This magnet wants to move around on me. So I just flip over my cutting pad. See, does that look centered? We've got one, two, one, two, and then it's right after the second one. Yes. 
Okay, I'm gonna run this through my Big Shot. Since I'm going through two layers, I'm running it through um, kind of back and forth a couple of times to really make sure that we get that cut out nice and simple and it really was that easy. And then the other, I might as well cut right away. I'm gonna be using a little bit of a frame on the outside of our shaker. So I'm just going to grab a scrap of pool party here. And I'm using the circle, I think this is the biggest circle from the stitch circle framelits. And then I matched up the layering circles framelit that fits right inside of it. And just layer those like so. So we've got our stitch on the outside and the layering circle on the inside. And I'm gonna run that through my big shot here. And then what we have is a stitched frame that we're going to use on our card front that's going to go over our circle. Okay, I'm going to glue this down right away, but this circle is a little bit intricate, so I'm going to use my little silicone craft sheet trick. Um, I've been saying how the old glue on your craft sheet just comes right up. See how simple that is? It just peels right up. Kind of fun to peel off actually. Ooh, I think I got a dead glue bottle here. Okay, and now I'm just going to take that glue and go around. And I'm going to line that up over my window opening here. Okay, now we want our, uh, we want our window sheet on here, so let's make sure, yes, that is good and the right size, and I don't want all this glue goobing all over the place here. So again, I'm just going to use that to dab it down. And then glue that window sheet onto the back of our very front card layer. Now, those of you who have made shaker cards before, I have a little tip for you. Um, sometimes once you get the stuff in there, it wants to stick to the window. So to keep it from having that static cling, I use my embossing buddy and I wipe that embossing buddy all over the window sheet. That should help to keep all of your pieces from sticking to the front window 
cling of your card. Okay. Next, we need some stuff to put in our shaker card. So I'm using, uh, I don't even know the name of this punch, but it's the one in that suite. And I'm just going to pop out some stars that we can use as confetti in our card. So to do this, all I'm doing is kind of pushing that cardstock in and finding an opening. If any extra chunks come out, I'm just going to throw those away. And all these colors I chose based on the colors that coordinate with this designer series paper. And since we're going with a blue color theme, I don't want to use too much of the pink, so I'll just pop that out. One of those. And then, of course, we got these super gorgeous glimmer paper. And I want a whole bunch of those. This looks pretty good. Ooh, how about some of these? These would be fun. Some of our actual striped paper. I think that would be cute. We'll do one more of those. Okay. Now, let me move some of this out of the way here. What I like to do is kind of try and set my card so I know if I put these punches here all in the center, we should be good to go when we go to put on our top layer. So we're just getting our little pieces in here. And then I want those sparkles. So when I put these pieces in here, um, a little tip, make sure you actually set them on here with the sparkle side up. They aren't going to have enough room to flip over to the other side once you have closed your like officially quote unquote sealed up your shaker card so those silver pieces won't go anywhere those glimmer pieces they won't flip around they won't go anywhere and this is the way that you can ensure that they stay glimmery side towards whoever is opening that card up All right. Okay, now. Okay, everybody's gotten really quiet. What are you thinking so far? Are you nervous for this card? Do you think you could do something like this? This really isn't that 
difficult. It's just a lot of steps. Okay, now I'm taking my foam strips and I'm just going to place it all around the circle. Ironically, these foam strips are just about the perfect size here for this card. And then you just pull off that top part. I wanna make sure this is down nice and secure. Okay, now all we need to do is put this layer, ooh, I totally forgot something. I can't put this down yet. I'm glad I looked at my notes here. Before we put this down, I'm going to use some of this um, silver baker's twine that comes um, in this suite, I think it's called, it's the Silver and Pool Party Baker's Twine. And I'm going to I'm going to put this over the top of this plastic sheet so it doesn't accidentally stick to my paper. I was supposed to do this before I put my um, adhesive down, but we'll make it work. Okay, I'm going to tie this in a bow. Oh my gosh, this is not one. Of, there we go. Did not want to cooperate with me. And again, when I'm working with Baker's Twine, I really like that knot to help get it tied down good. And then I'm just going to put this in a bow. Okay, all the rest we can do after we have this mounted. Now, I'm going to mount this to my card front. Get all these pieces in here. Ooh, easy, so cute. Okay, and we have one more step. Oh, you know what? I forgot a step. We're gonna have to leave it forgotten. I was supposed to stamp this down here behind these stars, so you have to pretend that it's there. It's not. <laughs> Okay, we've got this stamp here. It says, a star is born. I'm gonna stamp that in the corner of my pool party. Scrap. And then I'm gonna do a little fussy cutting. This one's super easy to fussy cut. to bend it a little bit to get it to kind of pop off the page and arrange these little tails and 
I'm going to move this up and get our little star is going to go there. Cute. Okay, I've got some silver baker's twine. I lost my dimensionals. Does anyone see them? Grab it. Oh, here they are. All right. Got a little silver baker's twine here. We're going to make one of those messy loops behind it. So I go around my finger, three of my fingers here a few times, trim the end. And then all I do is just stick it down onto my dimensionals. And then I trim the ends where I don't want the ends sticking up. See that? Okay, now we're gonna stick this on the card. Uh, this tail wants to stick up, so I'm going to put a little mini dimensional under it. And secure that down. Okay. And now we're on our finishing touches of our loop. that tight and remember I like those glue dots to secure down our bows keep them from going anywhere and then I just trim the ends and there you have your shaker card what do you think? If you love it, show me the love. I love all your comments. Now, of course, I like to bling up the inside of my cards too. So, uh, let's do some stamping. We're gonna get this heart that I was supposed to use on the front and didn't. And then in our darker color, we've got our sentiment here that says, congratulations, your world just got a little brighter. I need to re-ink this pad too, holy cow. Julie, I think you're right, I think it's the cold weather. Stamp that off to the side there. Then all we need to do is adhere this to the inside of our card. This is my dead one. There you have it. Super pretty. My window sheet keeps wanting to come off, so I'm just gonna glue that down up here. What do you think? Do you love it? This was so easy. Now, I have to confess, I'm gonna be using this card, so this one will not be one of the prizes. Sorry um in my live giveaway but i promise i will swap it out with something else 
here is one I made in pink that coordinates so you can see one for a girl and one for a boy. Beautiful! Um, I put a few finishing touches on this other one here. I think we can do that on our blue card too. Get a few um, of these adhesives, the adhesive backed sequins going. We all know I like to do these in odd numbers. So we've got three, four, do this one here, five. Pretty. Cute, huh? So, shaker cards, not that difficult. A little bit more steps, but not too hard to do. Oh, let me clean these up quick. And then we're on to our last project of the night. Not near as many steps as this one, so I promise I won't keep you too long. Get some workspace going here. If you have any questions or want tips on shaker cards that you didn't get a chance to ask, or if you're looking for at the replay, just shoot me an email, countrycardsbyrose at gmail.com, or of course you're always welcome to private message me on Facebook. <clears throat> now on to our last project. For this one, we're using some sentiments from that Forever Lovely stamp set and our free celebration stamp set, So Happy Together. This one um, was my favorite. When I first saw the celebration flyer, it is not my favorite anymore. Home to Roost is now my new favorite. Okay. Okay, this stamp set is free with a $50 purchase. You've got your fun uh, frogs. And some really great sentiments here. Beautiful. We're making a Valentine's Day card. So I have been seeing when I go places for inspiration, I notice trends. And I have been seeing a trend lately of all of these square cards. And so I got to thinking about how I can make a square card and what we can do to make an envelope for that card to fit in. So that's what we're making for our last project. Um, what I've got here is our, our card base. This is a piece of Berry Burst cardstock. It is four inches by eight inches. And to make our card base, we're going to fold this in half. So what we're left with here is a four by four card. Okay. I've also got a piece of lemon lime twist. This is one and a quarter the short way and four inches the long way. Do a little stamping on my card base here. I'm going to take these hearts from the Forever Lovely stamp set 
and I'm going to stamp these going diagonal across our card base. Next, I've got the words, love you. That also comes from the Forever Lovely stamp set. This was the one that was the other two-step stamp where you had your flowers and then the greenery coming in behind it that I showed, I think it was two weeks ago. And I'm just going to do some repeated stamping. all across this piece of lemon lime twist. Um, for those of you who aren't crazy about designer series paper or are running low and need an idea before your order will get there next, this is a super easy way to create your own designer series paper. Okay, I am going to be using this as a strip across our berry burst. Now, I've got this adorable frog, and I'm going to use my memento ink. I'm using memento because I'm going to be coloring him in with my Stampin' Blends, and we don't wanna be using Stazon for that. That's not gonna work. I think that the Stazon may bleed into your blends and then you ruin your marker. <clears throat> so, I've got Dark Daffodil Delight, Light Granny Apple Green, and dark granny apple green. And of course I got out my color lifter because sometimes I don't stay in the lines very good. Okay, so first I'm coloring this frog spots and his belly. Now I'm going to come in with my dark and color some of this frog here. And then we'll come in with our light. Finish up. And then, of course, I got to blend it here with the dark. The key to blending your Stampin' Blends is that they're wet so after the ink has dried from your first layer you need to kind of go back in and get it wet again with your second color or third or fourth because you can blend um, more than just a couple colors together. Okay, there we have our frog. What do you think? I kind of like that shading. 
All right, we're gonna use our two inch circle punch to punch him out. And I've got a piece of basic black. I'm gonna use my, I don't know, is this called the scalloped circle punch? I think that's what it's called. Or is it the sunburst or something? I can't remember all the names of everything. Okay, that's all we need these punches for, so. <clears throat> now we're just gonna glue our frog down to our black piece that just peeks out behind our frog. Get that centered. Okay. We're going to glue our lemon lime twist strip down to our card base. Like so. And I want this to say Happy Valentine's Day. Whoops, that's my Versa mark. So, and I want this nice and dark, so I'm going to use my Stays on ink. And I'm using the Happy Valentine's Day sentiment from that Forever Lovely stamp set. So, hopefully, I can get this straight. Ooh, not too bad. I think that stays on makes a really deep <clears throat> black, a sharp black color that's easier to see. Charlene says that really makes the frog stand out. Yes, doesn't that black behind it really make him pop? He's going to go on the front of our card here. But of course I want, you know me, I have to have some sort of ribbon or baker's twine on my projects. So I'm using the Berry Burst um, metallic edge ribbon for a pop of romantic bling on this card. And I'm just going to wrap it around. and tie this in a simple knot. And I haven't glued it down yet, so I can slide this where I want. I'm just going to trim these ends. And then get our frog. Pop him up on dimensionals. There he is. Let me do one more here. I happen to put those dimensionals right where the ribbon is and they're not staying very good. So I'm just going to tuck them in under here. There we go. Okay, now. We have this gorgeous four by four square card. Of course, you can stamp whatever you want on the inside. But the question everyone asks is, how the heck am I going to 
get this in an envelope, either to mail or just to give to somebody or maybe to adhere to a package. So I'm gonna show you a tip for that right now. I'm using a piece of designer series paper here from the Share What You Love pack. This is a great way for you to use up your designer series paper, by the way. And I'm using our envelope punch board. This thing is so cool and I don't use it near enough. So this is foolproof. Your directions are right here on the punch board. First, it tells you to select your card side. I've made a four by four card. So I have to cut my paper six and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. That's what I've done. So I cut this six and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. You get a scoring tool in here. It slips right in here. See how it sticks in there? You just pull it out and you're ready to go. So two, trim the paper to the correct size. I've already done that. Now align the left edge to the score line measurement. You see on here, it tells you, you have a column that says score line. So for my four by four card and the piece of paper I have, it tells me to go to um, three and a half. So I'm gonna line up the left edge of my paper on three and a half. <coughs> then it tells me punch and score, okay? So I've got it at three and a half. I'm going to punch and then I'm going to score. There's a scoring guide right here. Okay, the next step. Rotate the paper 90 degrees counterclockwise. That's that way. Align the score mark with the score guide and then repeat the first steps. Okay, so sometimes it's a little easier if you fold this a bit so you can see right where that score line is. Okay, I've marked up my score line with this guide. See how this says scoring guide? I've lined that up and now I'm going to punch and score. just like I did before. Now I'm gonna repeat again. Line this up with my scoring guide. Punch and score. Okay, I have one more side to do. Line it up with my scoring guide. Punch. and score. Okay, so now I've got all four of those sides scored, and then it says, round the corners with the reverse punch. Okay, so I don't need my scoring guide anymore. And notice on the back side here, it says reverse punch. So now I need to round all of these corners. I just stick it in here, punch, punch, punch. We've got one more. And then all we have to do is finish putting our envelope together. I like to use tear tape to secure my envelope. Whenever I'm using 3D projects or envelopes, tear tape is where it's at. I'm gonna grab my bone folder so that I make sure we get these edges down. Good. Okay. So. Just gonna put a piece of tear tape here. Right along this edge. This is very strong adhesive. It's not going anywhere once you stick it down. Okay. Then all you have to do is peel that top layer of the tear tape off. And we 
we've got our sides folded in and now I'm going to bring up the bottom. And look, we have a cute little envelope that our card is going to slide right into. Then you can secure this with a sticker or with some glue. If you're going to mail it, just print, just do one of those white mailing labels to write in your mailing label um, for your to and from, or you can stick this on a pretty catalog. Charlene's asking, can you order that tape in the catalog? Yes, you can find it in the area where the adhesives are. So the same pages of the catalog where you have the liquid glue, the snail, you'll find the tear tape and like the silicone craft sheets and everything. So here's another envelope I made already for this card. So easy. And these colors, I think, go really, really good together. Really, really cute Valentine. I might give this to John. I, I don't know if he's watching, but. All right. So envelope punch board makes it so, so easy. Does anyone have any questions? Let me get my projects back out. We've got our adorable frog. We've got our two shaker cards. And of course, we've got all of our simple stamping note cards with flowers. Easy peasy. And if you think about it, we made a shaker card, a 4x4 in a matching envelope, and one of these cards in about an hour. So not too shabby, right? All right. Thank you so much for joining me live tonight. I'm not seeing any questions coming in, so I'm going to wrap it up. Um, thank you again. Make sure that you check out more of my lives. Um, I'm I've got my goal. I'm doing this every Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Um, <clears throat> join me right here next Wednesday. I hope that all of you stay warm and stay safe in this weather. It's very dangerous out there if you're in Wisconsin. So please stay safe. Stay um, in the warmth of your home if you don't have to go out. Thanks again, ladies, for joining. I hope you have a great rest of your night and a great rest of your week.